Hey guys, God bless you. You were born for such a time as this. You were born to overcome everything that comes against you in the name of Jesus, with faith in Jesus Christ, who loves you and died for you a painful death on the cross. They nailed his hands, his feet, put a crown of thorns on him. He carried your shame and your guilt because that's what pleased the Father was for you to be saved. So be a man of God, be a woman of God, be the church. Today I wanna to talk about the messenger of Satan or a spirit sent by Satan. In 2 Corinthians 12, we see the apostle Paul going off because nobody was giving him respect that he was feeling he deserved as the apostle and a great apostle that he was. He talks about having revelations and visions and literally being taken from his body up into heaven where he says he saw things in heaven that he can't even describe or he is not allowed to speak of. He can't even talk about it. Then he goes on in verse 7. He says, now to keep me from becoming conceited. Now, conceited is something we see a lot in church. It's where it's all about that person. It's all about me. It's all about uh, what I've accomplished. It's all about where I'm going. And, and Paul says to keep him from becoming conceited because of what? These surpassingly great revelations. This not just knowing Jesus, but knowing what Jesus has planned. Not just knowing what Jesus has planned, but seeing what Jesus has planned out is, is taking place. He's seen these things. Now he says there was given him a thorn in the flesh. Now we think of Christ, when Christ had the thorns placed on his head, that was just for agony. It wasn't going to kill him. It was going to mentally drain him. And then if you get, a, I get thorns in my hands when, I, when I'm cutting down trees or landscaping, it hurts all day long. It doesn't just hurt when it pokes you. It hurts all day long. It takes at least 24 hours for a thorn in your flesh to stop hurting. And some of these thorns have poison on them. Some of them will hurt longer and you have to remove them of course. So Paul says that because of that, he was given a messenger of Satan. Now Paul's in the church. This is after Jesus died. So we can see here that even Christians, even apostles can have demonic spirits tormenting them. Because why though? Not just because God's rude or mean, but because he was becoming conceited. He was becoming prideful. And what God was revealing to him. And it says that this messenger, this spirit of Satan was sent to torment him. Now, when we break that down, what is a messenger? Well, a messenger carries a message. What is Satan? Satan is the opposer or the accuser of the brethren. And then it says torment. Now, torment is, is um, anything that is going to be severely physical or mental suffering. So we see here that Satan sends a messenger to physically or mentally torment, oppose, and, and stir up evil against Paul. That's what this spirit was. That's the level that Paul was dealing with. And it says that it tormented him. And he said that he prayed to God three times, take this away. And God says, no, I'm not going to take it away because my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Because you're not going to trust on all these revelations. You're not going to trust on the knowledge. You're not going to trust on prophecy or your apostle, your title. He says, you're going to trust in me so that my power is made perfect in your weakness. Then Paul gets a different revelation here. And he says, okay, well then I'm no longer going to boast in myself and what I've accomplished and what I know and what I've seen. This guy's seen the rapture. Paul has seen Christ seated on the throne. He said he's seen things that he can't even talk about. He says, now I'm going to boast about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Now, he says, what, what is weakness? Okay, so he goes and it says, I, for Christ's power to rest on me, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now in the Greek, these five are translated as weakness is defined as infirmities or unfirmness. Now the Greek word that, that they use is asthenia. Now asthenia is an abnormal physical weakness or lack of energy. And they use it in a medical term for chronic respiratory disease. So it was translated from 
well, Paul probably wrote in Greek. Um, he wrote in Aramaic. He wrote in a lot. But in, in the Greek Bible, it's saying that he was weak at times. He lacked energy. That's what his weakness was. He was physically drained, physically unable to be as powerful as he knew that he was, as filled with his title. He couldn't be filled with his title because he had this physical weakness abnormally weakness and then it goes on to insults now that is translated in the greek to outrages where we think that people were attacking paul where we know for a fact that paul got attacked when he was preaching we know that paul couldn't go certain places because they would kill him on sight like he was a criminal and then it says in hardships and it translates in the greek to necessities so paul says I, whether with or without i've learned the secret to life to be uh, whether I'm abounding or whether I'm lacking, the secret to life is to trust in God. Uh, it says, I've learned the secret. It's in Philippians. I've learned the secret to trust in God, whether I have or don't have. To be, there's a certain word for it, to be content. Paul says in Philippians, I've, I've learned the secret to life is to be content, whether I have or don't have but to trust purely in Jesus Christ. He then says persecutions, and in the Greek, that's translated to chasings, where they literally, he says persecutions to him, it's not persecution they talk bad about you, it's persecution they're chasing you. In the Greek, it translates to chasings. And then it says difficulties. I boast about my difficulties, which means cramped spaces in the Greek, tight spaces, or being in distress. Now we know Paul and, and Silas were put in the gallows where the literally where the feces of the prisoners are thrown down. And that's where they, they put him in the lowest level. And him and Silas said, let's worship to God. And they shook the prison and got set free. So when Paul says these things, he's not just saying them because, you know, this is his goal. He's saying this out of, he's really lived this out. And this is how, he says, when I'm weak, then God is strong. And this is how we stay humble. And we are constantly glorifying the Father. We're constantly glorifying Jesus and what he's done in our life, guys. So God bless you. I pray that this that this uh, touched you and that the Lord will reveal everything for you. The prayer will be in the next video. God bless you guys.